she has shown me just start to be naive okay everyone was like oh my god ray made a mistake ray this giant streamer he literally farmed the entirety lsf i'm not kidding you you're going to go down a terrible rabbit hole with this and you can't beat the internet i can basically take a swipe at this person get kudos for it and not worry about the pump back from it it's just soap I, I didn't even reply. I didn't even know what to say. I was like, are you kidding me? This is not even comparable. Everybody in the gaming industry just looks every single week to find something that they're going to be mad about so that they can talk about it on social media. We really have to be held accountable and do our due diligence before promoting anything. After further reflection, we have decided to move forward on a new path, effectively terminating the Reflect brand. That I'll never do something like that again. <laughs> in late 2021, Rachel Hofstetter, better known as Valkyrie, revealed her vision of bridging the gap between in the gaming world and the half a trillion dollar cosmetics industry, a product for gamers to protect themselves from the supposed threat of blue light pollution, yet another downside of enjoying their favorite pastime. It's an idea that makes sense. Blue light has become a topic of conversation over the last few years, as are the effects it has on us. There are now blue light filters, glasses, and other means to reduce our exposure to this newfound threat. So it would be an intuitive decision to combine those fears into something helpful for her audience and also her business portfolio. An initial ovation from many soon turned to waves of criticism and abuse as the foundations of her ambitions slowly crumbled. The claims she made were brought into question and her product line, seemingly innovation, was branded snake oil and an attempt at deception. The co-founder of a prospective powerhouse is seemingly thrown into the wild, whilst the other actors seep away into the darkness. A cosmetics line barely born was destroyed within hours it was brought into the world. A popular streamer, one of YouTube's own, was facing an image crisis and tackling it alone. Beyond Valkyrie's creation and subsequent collapse, voices within her circle chirped up creating division amongst the ranks. One mob voiced notes of condemnation, others fought back, and the drama gained all the attention. What could have been a lesson for those building their brand slowly became a battle to fulfill their moral grandstanding plans. Those at fault escaped the fall, their ideas and methods left unaccountable, free to claim some more. Another star takes on the light, and the message it sent shows that a reflection had been spent. Last year's woes left a stain overlooked, a story unfinished like a meal undercooked. So join me as we ask, was Valkyrie the director, or just a character in another's deception? Two in three men will experience hair loss by the time they're 35. Some will embrace it, others will regret not taking action sooner, and others choose keeps. The boffins at Keeps have again reached out to help fund the mighty BWC content machine with their online subscription service aimed at helping men keep the hair on their heads. Through the power of science, Keeps offers treatments to help stop hair loss and improve hair growth. With their network of medical experts, Keeps provides you with the best solution to achieve your hair goals, delivered directly to your door so you don't even have to leave the house. What's even better is that it won't break the bank, as Keeps offers generic versions of the FDA approved hair loss medications. But you better act fast because prevention is key. So what are you waiting for? Hair loss stops with Keeps. To get 50% off your first order, go to keeps.com forward slash BWC or click the link in the description. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash BWC. Valkyrie is one of the biggest names in the streamer and gaming world. Her rise from GameStop employee to being the first female creator for 100 Thieves and then signing an exclusive deal with YouTube is a renowned creator success story. 2020 saw her brand explode, becoming one of the fastest growing streamers and being the lockdown watch of many. 
often playing games with influential creators, entertainers, and even politicians. I was in the upper left part of the map. Her status and achievements rewarded her a stake in 100 Thieves last year, and since then, she hasn't looked back. Enter Reflect, a brand new cosmetics line for gamers by one of its biggest representatives. We all spend so much time in front of our screens. Think of your laptop, your phone, your tablet, even watches have screens these days. I get it, I'm a full-time content creator. My career depends on being glued to a screen, but all that screen time started to take a toll on my body and my skin. So I did something about it, because we all know screens aren't going anywhere. Meet Reflect. It's the skincare collection that's for everyone who uses a screen. Euphoria, another success story in the creator and gaming world as another person breaks the barriers and expands their portfolio beyond the screen. The initial response to Rachel's launch was positive. Her fans obviously lauded her for creating something new and exciting, and fellow creators joined in singing their praises for opening a new chapter. It was also something that felt exciting. A professional production for an announcement video, a seamless and interactive website, there was a general appeal to the products and evidence of well-thought marketing. The brand's Twitter account boasted about its own trademarked formula with what appeared to be an engineered hashtag hopeful to reach the algorithm. But the initial hype soon turned to skepticism when tweets questioning the viability of the Reflect brand started to gain traction. The word scam soon followed, with some arguing that there was no evidence that blue light can damage the skin. But most of the criticism was directed at the marketing, suggesting that Reflect was using a manufactured fear to capitalize on a group of people prone to blind consumption. Shortly after the backlash gained traction, Rachel resorted to her personal Twitter account, tweeting about her confusion at the situation, saying she was told to remain silent until the next day. Her response? A voice note addressing the early controversy tweeted from her main account. I just wanted to give a quick update, even though I'm probably not allowed to do this, but it's been a very, very long two days. But I've been waiting to speak and to stream until after I see how the Reflect website has been updated. I also wanted to say that all of the hate and the doubt and the concerns um, and the criticism are all warranted and valid. I understand completely where you're all coming from. I also was very upset and confused when I saw the website and there were no links to the studies or credits to the labs or the people that worked behind the scenes to uh, make Reflect happen. So. Yeah, it's very confusing, lacking a lot of information, but they're updating it now. And after it's updated, I will stream and I will answer everything and I will talk about my experience and all of it. As expected, the situation became a topic of conversation and the usual suspects joined in on the commentary with XQC questioning Rachel's motives. But first, Hassan. Why are you guys literally refusing to hear the words that are coming out of my mouth. I don't believe the fucking uh, blue light is destroying your skin in the way that the Reflect product presents itself. It's just fucking soap. I like some of the vodka streams. What makes you know about skincare? True. Okay. And what he said is, you are a celebrity. So basically what's going to happen is the there's that product just here. Came out of your oh, and this is where you end up right here. If you can communicate this product, you can make money off the product. Cuz look at Gaga. She's the creative director of Polaroid. I like some of the Gaga songs. What the fuck does she know about cameras? Pokimane later offered her opinion on the situation, as did Ludwig. I completely agree that there are valid, valid research concerns, especially when you call out something to be harmful, but it's not like universally considered as such, like uh, in the same way that sun damage is. So I'm really, really glad that she acknowledged that those concerns were valid. And I guess all I can really say... For you to donate <laughs> three it's so hard to say anything with lyrics, but I hope that she creates a solution to resolve it and does right by her community. I know you guys really care about her. Um, I guess all in all, I just feel like this is a really important example that highlights 
how people like us, streamers with large audiences, especially if they're young and impressionable, like we really have to be held accountable and do our due diligence before promoting anything. It's my hot take. People aren't actually mad about the, the pseudoscience of, of blue lights. Gamers are just mad about hygiene. This is typical influencer Valkyrae trying to scam her viewers for a buck. And I'm thinking to myself, like, she just pulled 50,000 units sold of merchandise. Probably cleared seven figures. Easy. Is this really, is this like... Were they just assuming that this was some nefarious decision she had made? Hoped no one would ever notice? And then would make a quick buck that she was dying for at the risk of reputation? She had to be dumb as bricks. A lot of the initial commentary came from within the gaming and streaming communities, so the analysis was as insightful as you'd expect. As it reached the wider streams of the internet, there was interest from those who understood the cosmetics industry and know their way around the various products on the market. I really like Ray. I think it's great to see women of color in business, but you don't need to protect your skin against blue light from screens. Even with a big ass monitor, you would need days or months to get the same blue light as 15 minutes of sun. And if you do want to protect against blue light from the sun, which honestly isn't a big issue for most people, these products still probably won't do much. The active ingredients are antioxidants, which could potentially mop up the free radicals that the light causes in your skin. But that's so much less effective than blocking the blue light from getting into your skin in the first place, like a sunscreen. For that, you'd use foundations or tinted sunscreens which have iron oxides in them. And you probably have antioxidants in your skincare already. I'm sure the products are fine, they're reasonably priced, they'll probably get more people into looking after their skin. They probably could have included a sunscreen, but chill out on the screen thing. A few days after the announcement of Reflect, the backlash, and Rachel's Twitter responses, she decided to take to her YouTube channel with a stream addressing the situation, as well as an impromptu Q&A. What ensued was a PR nightmare. Alright, I'll just start uh, from the beginning. Rachel's stream provided an interesting insight into not only the way the brand was developed, but also the relationships between creators. But first, we'll begin with what she has to say about her involvement with Reflect. Joanna and uh, Claudia um, found me and uh, they had a meeting with me and they said they really liked my brand, they really liked, uh, who, you know, just like who I was and everything. They brought a bunch of uh, like products and samples and all this stuff and they asked me during that meeting if there was something that I was interested in. Um, is there any like research on blue light and how it can affect your skin? Cause I, you know, I don't really know much about it and stuff. And they said that, yeah, we can do studies on it and stuff. The next six months, uh, they ran their own studies they did their own research with their labs and their chemists. Um, Paulina is one of the lead chemists in, uh, at iDeviation Labs. I saw the research. I, I saw it with my own eyeballs. And I was really excited because I thought it was groundbreaking research. I was excited. I thought it was really going to help not just like me, but like other people as well. So two established figures within the cosmetics industry reach out to one of the most influential women in the gaming industry with the prospect of entering the market with her own brand of skincare. It sounds like the perfect match. Rachel also gives us a general timeline for the development of this brand, placing us towards the beginning of 2020. Yeah, um, I saw their research. I loved it. I thought it was so sick. I was like, wow, this is incredible. I can't believe like I'm going to be part of something like this. My involvement with Reflect for the next year and a half was they would send me samples of the products. I tested the smell, the texture, the packaging, the colors of the packaging. I've never been to the lab in person. I've just seen 
the research and all that. Rachel's role within Reflect as a so-called creative collaborator was about deciding the look and feel of the products so they would appeal to her audience. It could be comparable to the role of creative director, which has seen other non-expert figures represent a brand selling products they may know little about. That's why I've been really excited for the past two years. I think I, I have a lot of years that have been around for a very long time that know that I was really excited for this because um, people, I saw a lot of comments of people saying it only takes one second on Google to research this. We didn't do one second of researching. We ran our own studies. We did our own research. Her trust in these studies has two sides. Obviously, a Google search is not a justifiable reason to judge the validity of an idea although it can give general insight into the mood about it. The issue with this criticism, however, is that a lot of the dissenting scientific opinions came after the plan was supposedly put in motion and the research was conducted. The second is, of course, the source of the research, and it's often bold for someone without expertise in a field of study to question the data presented to them. It's easy to judge in posterity, and in hindsight, maybe she could have dug a little deeper into what the studies were and kept tabs on the current research research. Unfortunately, it's a precarious situation and she was unfit to judge whatever she was shown. And it's unlikely she had any suspicion towards her business partners. This whole time, I was under the impression that all of that research and everything that I saw was going to be on the website. When uh, Reflect dropped, it was critical and crucial for there to be information um, and there was nothing but a WebMD link. I had meetings with them after that the past few days. I didn't want to speak or like stream because like I needed to see how the website was going to be updated and that's when I learned that their studies can't be publicized. So that's the part where I was very naive about because I didn't know that part. I've seen a lot of articles like saying yes and no and stuff but like I've also seen like their own personal research but like it's really hard to want to be involved in something where it's you know you can't show what they've done. I don't want to have to convince people like oh just trust me. I understand entirely the position I put myself in. Naive is the best descriptor for her in this situation. It does seem like she went into the cosmetics industry without any sort of guidance from other perspectives, particularly those with experience. If this was the case, she was vulnerable to deception, and the way she describes events in this stream, it does appear she was unaware of the processes. Reflect is something that Ulta, they invested in Reflect, and it's going to be sold at Ulta in stores tomorrow. The people that work behind the scenes and the people, all of everything that's happened in the past two years, they don't get to experience what I'm experiencing. I'm the face for it. Like I am the creator for it or the, the creative collaborator for it. And so I'm the one that gets all of it. Isn't that crazy? The fact a retail distributor was investing $4 million into a startup indicates the belief in the brand from other players. Rachel's status was obviously appealing and Ulta is clearly game to the creator economy. However, it does appear the strategy miscalculated the cynicism of gamers, as well as the social power the community has through the use of social media. I'm kind of surprised that the people that I'm working with expected people just to believe me. I thought that all this information was gonna be on the website. What might be marketable in other areas has the extra jeopardy due to completely different cultures. The stream then shifted to an impromptu Q&A and she began responding to comments and questions posed to her during the stream. Oh no, I failed to make a successful cash grab. Um, okay, that's also another thing. I don't need money. Some people are like, oh, she could have just done a regular skincare thing. She could have just done more merch. You're right. I can literally just straight up retire and have enough money to take care of myself and my family for the rest of my life. This wasn't about money, it was more so like I saw their research and I was really excited that they wanted me to be involved in something that's felt revolutionary. Like I don't need the money. It's not about money, it's about sending a message. 
In fact, it doesn't nearly pay as much as merch does, that's for sure. I don't think you guys understand what a week of merch did. If I really needed more money, wouldn't I just sell more merch every week? I'm not fucking flexing. Only she knows her true intentions, but critically, for her to suggest there was no interest in money is somewhat disingenuous. You wouldn't put two years of your time into something that isn't going to benefit you, and adding a cosmetics brand to your portfolio strengthens your existing brand. It was a business decision, and in her own words, was something she thought would be revolutionary. It was an attempt to build a platform beyond the streaming world, so when she decides to move on from the grind, she can sit back and work on her investments. However, it became increasingly clear her relationship with her partners became fraught as a result of the backlash. I am in a bound contract. I do believe in the product, but I do also wish to not be involved because the research can't be public. The Valkyrie brand was directly tied to Reflect, it was the key marketing target, and Rachel was the one approached to collaborate on a cosmetics venture. It was as much her brand as it was anyone else's, and her involvement goes beyond just being the face of the product. Reflect was, poetically, a reflection of her own values, and she believed in what she was creating, but wanted out when she lost faith in its direction. I have no desire to scam people. I've always prided myself in having my heart and my head in the right place. It's been very comforting seeing like people that have been around for a long time that know where my heart is. As easy as it is to criticize her for this fiasco, it's also something she should be applauded for because it was a great risk to invest in an industry she clearly didn't understand. Her incompetence with Reflect then is most likely due to misplaced trust, corporate backed research and career business people knowing what to say and where to point. So I go to them asking, first of all, there's no information on the website and we're making a claim that doesn't have information on the website. Okay, they say, we'll put information on the website. I see the website. It's only third party information. How come our studies aren't going on the website? We need to protect like the information. We don't want it to get stolen. People have to try the products. They have to do peer reviews and the more and more skincare products out there for blue light are out there, the more it'll be FDA or whatever gets to approve it or something. This is what I should have known two years ago. <laughs> it's wild to me that I, it didn't even pop into my head like, I saw the research, I was like, holy shit, this is great, I love it, this is insane, this is revolutionary, this is awesome, I'm excited to be part of something in the future. But the beauty and skincare industry is so different. It is so different. Like, I'm sure you guys saw Joanna's comment on Twitter. It was on my, my voice memo. We actually have to look at this tweet. Like, who types like this? Bravo, game girl! The sentiment echoed by most people is that Joanna Coles' comment is tone deaf, that it didn't read the room, and pretty much highlighted the cultural differences between this business person and the gaming and creator worlds. It just kind of reminded me, like, I feel like these people that are in the beauty and skincare industry don't understand how the gaming industry works at all. And then I was also thinking about, I was like, I don't think I've ever seen any other influencer go through what I'm going through. In reality, Rachel isn't the only creator to be caught up in a cosmetics misfire. Jaclyn Hill notoriously had her entire brand scrutinized because of contaminated products. Gabby Hanna too, when she endorsed a brand and told people to manage their expectations. However, it's true that Rachel stepped into an entirely different playing field. They all kept telling me like, this is the same thing that happened with sunscreen, this is the same thing that's happened with CBD, nicotine. Now I'm at the point where it's like, I don't even know if I want to be a part of that anymore. Maybe this is a good thing it happened, because then maybe other people can learn from this, from my mistake, my ignorance. I should have known more. I think this is like bigger than a misstep. Negligence? Yeah. Naive. There are many adjectives for her role in the creation of Reflect, as well as the disastrous aftermath of its release. Taking to YouTube and going ahead with an unscripted live address of her thoughts on the controversy was another risk she should have considered. And as we see later on, it had very mixed results for how the situation eventually played out. But in the meantime, the Reflect brand was still open for business. So let's look at the products. 
The main point of contention with Reflect is the claim that it's a defense against blue light from artificial sources. I'm no dermatologist or photobiologist, so I can't provide you with any academic insight into this statement. However, it's not a theory that hasn't been discussed and debated, and there's available information that could provide context for why people are upset but also why Rachel went ahead with this brand. So let's take a look at what the science says. The reason research is conducted into blue light in the first place is that it has been found to cause damage to the skin. According to a handy press release from Beiersdorf, natural blue light from the sun generates oxidative stress, which results in skin aging faster and increases the likelihood of hyperpigmentation or having dark patchy areas of skin. About half of the sun's solar radiation is visible light, of which a third is blue light. In comparison, the well-known villain UV constitutes just 5% of total solar radiation. But its damage is well documented. According to this Beiersdorf report, blue light can penetrate much deeper into the skin than wrinkle-inducing UVA radiation, which is why there is interest investigating its long-term effects. Other articles echo this sentiment, suggesting more research into blue light to truly understand its impact. A natural deviation from a theory is what other angles we can look into. And in the midst of everyone working from home, attention turned towards other forms of blue light emission. In the last few years, studies have been conducted to test whether the blue light from our screens could affect us with long exposure times. Most of the findings so far reveal that, despite spending long times in front of the screen, it's nowhere near as comparable to spending short times in direct sunlight, thus not enough exposure to warrant concern. Although these studies are just the beginning, the current understanding is that the sun is much more powerful than an iPhone screen, which led to the backlash facing Rachel and Reflect. The problem with Reflect then isn't that it withheld its research, it was the fact it was marketed as a solution towards a problem that isn't based on scientific evidence. Even if they included their own studies to back the claims, and they were revolutionary like Rachel suggests, it would have been redundant because it would need to be reviewed and tested more to be a scientific truth. As well as this, Rachel's timeline suggests the research took just six months. And that's problematic. Studies into the effects of blue light are relatively new and tilted towards emission from the sun. For there to be substantial evidence of blue light pollution causing damage that needs protection, founded by a lab funded by a company that wants to produce a product in the space of just six months, definitely induces a little bit of skepticism. What's plausible is that the studies are instead developing Reflex trademarked formulae. There are many ingredients in formulae trademarked already that purport to absorb blue light, much like how sunscreen's ingredients absorb UV. If the BLPF does actually have compounds that absorb blue light, proven through performance studies, then it's not entirely false to say it can do so. But at the end of the day, it was marketed towards a manufactured problem, which was the straw that broke the camel's back, and led to Rachel needing time to reflect on her choices. There are many cosmetic brands that purport to provide skin protection from blue light. As well as this, blue light protection already exists within the gaming industry. There are glasses that supposedly shield your eyes from the effects of blue light, despite the science questioning its purpose with recent studies suggesting long-term damage is unlikely, rendering the product unnecessary. Rachel isn't the first person to promote the supposed danger of blue light, but she has been the most scrutinized. The issue goes beyond her, she's just a reflection of what happens within the cosmetics industry. Despite this, she did drag herself into the spotlight with her response, and the other aspect of her stream caused the situation to deteriorate. Rachel's tweets left many anticipating her response, wanting an answer and insight into what was happening. Her description of Reflex creation was insightful. However, the pressure of an entire community watching her led to some mistakes during the stream. Her decision to discuss which creators reached out to her with support, as well as her issues with them, ultimately derailed her efforts to explain the situation, and instead created an entire episode of drama within the streaming community. As a result, the focus on Reflect immediately shifted onto the relationships between herself and the creators she named, and also led to speculation about those who she didn't. 
it's tragic <laughs> how this happened, but I'm glad it happened to me. Like, even the people that are just, like, shitting on me, the friends that are using it for fun, you know, entertainment. I get it. It's entertaining. It's fun to see all this happen. I get it. I understand. I'm glad that it, it happened to me and not any of you, <laughs> you know? I'm glad that it's, I don't know. It also kind of helps me in a way because like I, I know now like who my real friends are. Like I know, like for example, Saikuno is the only friend that checked up on me every single day. Um, Celine, Carl, Corpse, Emma, the people that actually messaged me and talked to me like about it but there is one thing that did concern me not a single one of my friends or anyone that i know on the internet asked me hey ray what happened to the website why is there no information on the site not a single person a lot of people reached out and asked like are you okay but no one no one asked what happened it was weird that people and Pretty much all of my friends assumed that there was no research done. Cynics would suggest this was an attempt at deflecting criticism and spinning the angle. She did suggest the stream would involve discussion about social media and her friends, so it's not an unreasonable opinion. It's not uncommon for a personal group in the line of fire to point the beady eyes of the public at another perceived issue to take the heat off themselves. In fact, there's an entire industry of people who do this for a living. So is this what we're seeing here? Probably not. If it was, then she didn't try to make it subtle. She was set for failure. I've mentioned this before, some people just do not perform well when they tackle criticism or confrontation in real time. Pokimane is a great example of a creator who often struggles with responding to criticism in a live format. It's just not her cup of tea. Unless you are naturally competent, have had media training, or even developed experience over time, finding the right words to say in the moment is not an easy task. So the added weight of thousands hanging from every word you say, and a live relay of viewers commenting their thoughts, is unsurprisingly going to result in mistakes. So instead of mentioning some people who may have helped her, she suggested there was conflict, and that opened the floodgates for speculation. Why she did was most likely due to frustration and it's not surprising. Unlike quite a few of the creators who commented on the Reflect launch, before it hit the headlines, Rachel was regarded as a very uncontroversial figure in streaming. So of course she's going to sound a bit passive aggressive when it's her first real controversy and her project's failure is being used as the punchline for a few likes on Twitter. It's not uncommon for the internet to turn something serious or controversial into a joke or meme despite the real-world impact it may have on people. This is why listing her real friends based on how they supported her left much to be desired. There's a murky area with online communities and hyper-online audiences that consume streamers like reality TV. Any slight suggestion there may be issues behind the scenes becomes an issue for the viewers, and then gossip ensues. People wanted answers, and what they got was conflict. Rachel suggesting a few of her friends and colleagues had adopted the popular opinion and left her to fend for herself raised questions about their authenticity. Had she waited for the noise and anger to settle, then maybe she wouldn't have flustered. But pressure does that, and she caught herself off guard. She fueled the speculation when she started responding to questions. Did Pokey reach out to you? Um, it was interesting seeing which friends reached out to me when. A lot of the friends reached out after I posted the voice memo on Twitter. And then also a lot of friends reached out when I said I was gonna be talking about friends in social media. So yeah, it's, uh, I guess it, I, I don't know, maybe some of them got afraid I would, you okay with Leslie? I love Leslie. Leslie cared. Sydney as well, Sydney cared. Sydney reached out publicly. It also the friends that like defended my character I appreciate it so much. It was inevitable she would face backlash from the stream because of the suggestion others were trying to save face behind the scenes, and that they were afraid of being discussed in the stream. 
However, these comments had very little to do about the criticism she was facing, rather commenting on how others were responding to the backlash she faced. Vaguely mentioning what creators had done, but also highlighting those who were good friends just added fuel to the fire, but she definitely made her feelings clear about one streamer. What about Hassan? 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 Hassan messaged me and said, If people yell at you, ask them why they didn't have this energy for people shilling G Fuel when it has lead in it. Bish, this has this is not even comparable. I had a website of products that were claiming to do something with no links or information. It's completely different. I, I didn't even reply. I didn't even know what to say. I was like, are you kidding me? This is not even comparable. At this point, she starts to focus on individuals who irritated her, with Hassan appearing to be her biggest source of frustration. His commentary did amount to regarding a skincare product as being equivalent to soap, so the point of his message was most likely lost in confusion, which was explained when he reacted to it on his own stream. My point is that, like, it's literally just fucking soap, and it's just uh, face cream, and, like, getting upset at it beyond, like, comprehension in the way that people have and extending the drama is like really strange like i'm saying it's bad and most marketing is bad and based on faulty data and that it doesn't matter as long as it's not like a harmful product i don't give a shit rachel later admitted on twitter that she missed his point and I don't blame her because it wasn't conveyed in an understandable way. Despite thinking the products were soap, Hassan is correct in saying the product itself isn't harmful, but rather the marketing is where the issue lies. However, because of the way this streaming community works, and particularly how the live stream fails subreddit operates, Hassan became a diverging plotline to the saga. Attention shifted towards his comments about G Fuel, and people started to manufacture drama. Charlie calls Hassan out by his uh, G Fuel whataboutism take. The, the whole. This motherfucker literally has a G Fuel fridge right next to him while he's calling me out there. <laughs> That's so good. Look, I need to make this clear one more time. I know fucking dumbass is gonna clip chimp and like whatever. I don't care if you're fucking selling G Fuel. Just like I don't care if you're selling fucking blue light creams that like uh, is. is solving an issue does not exist okay at least as far as i know but yeah obviously the whole uh ray stream with the friends uh, tangent was not good it's not like g fuel has dangerous amounts of lead it would not be sold it would not be regulated <laughs> it would not be able to be sold not biased it's literal basic understanding of nutrition. So just from Rachel's stream quoting Hassan's message and explaining why it annoyed her, not only has that been used as a subject of discussion, so too has Hassan's comment. Then Critical talks about it, and is clipped in a way suggesting he was calling out Hassan. One of these on the top, Charlie calls out Hassan on G Fuel whataboutism take? Man, what the fuck? I mean, I knew that that was gonna- I don't really care. I knew that that was gonna happen. Like, just not allowed to talk about things. I wasn't calling out Hassan. Just talking about what he said. It's not a call out. It's not really a call out. I'm just talking about it. it. Makes it sound like it's aggressive. Just fucking talking about it, man. It's a reset big boy. It wasn't like a like a drama farm. I just wanted to talk about it. I got a fucking G Fuel fridge right next to me. I like. I mean, I like G Fuel, so I, I defended it. So all I just wanted to talk. Shit. Charlie fucking destroyed you, bro. Hey, how many fucking views did this one get? Probably not a lot, right? Because drama... The Turks have a fucking saying for this. Drama ekmektir. Okay? Drama is bread. Everybody's eating good. You get the fucking Reddit karma. Oh my god, Pog, dude. I'm getting the fucking Reddit karma, dude. This is a great example of how easy it was for just 45 seconds to be turned into three separate topics diverging attention away from the original issue. But her stream continued, and so too did her passive-aggressive mentions. Also, yeah, I did see Daft's, you know, I'm gonna make a new gamer product, come resistant keyboard. Yeah, it was funny. <laughs> but I did re reach out to her because I was the only reason. Listen, I get the, I get it, dude. I get the jokes. It's engagement. I get it. It's funny. It's it's a hot topic to shit on me right now. I get it. It's entertaining. I understand. I understand. Uh, but I did reach out to her because I was kind of concerned because I, I sent 
I sent a link to like a lot of people that I thought were cool with me uh, to receive a, a free gift package of the products. And Daph was one of the person people I sent it to. And um, I asked her, I was like, how come you didn't say anything to me about this until it was released? Like, were you planning that joke for like two months? But then it turns out that um, I had this copy pasta that I was sending to people that like, it said like, this is my two year project, it's a blue light skincare line. Um, if you want it, you fill it out. But like, she said that she didn't get that copy pasta. So um, I said, okay, I feel better knowing that you didn't know that it was a blue light skincare line. I feel better now. If this is the case, I can see the justification for her frustration with her colleagues. Daph was making jokes and also quoting the general understanding of blue light damage, so it looks like she's reacting to what's going on. But if she was asked two months before this release whether she wanted a PR package, and other people had as well, then it does raise a question about their integrity. However, the theme here is now clear. You have to trust Rachel's word that everything she is saying is accurate. She trusted the people behind Reflect telling her they had a good product, and now we have to trust that these creators didn't know what she was releasing. It's a complete mess. And then more names were thrown into the mix. Yeah, Toast reached out. Um, yeah. And Jack didn't. Septic guy. Jack Courage did. Yeah, Jack, um, like I saw that he commented and then he deleted his comment, rightfully so. Like I understand, like a lot of, a lot of my creator friends you know if you start getting backlash like oh i gotta watch my brand i understand that um but he didn't message me miz did message me i also saw that he did this weird product review on his stream <laughs> i think that was the thing that that's been startling the most is like the people that i play with all the time the people that actually worried about my well-being. Because yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I've had some terrible thoughts, like actually, like, like really terrible thoughts. Because it, it is something I've, I've always prided myself on being a, just trying to be a good person. But what happened was such a fucked up thing, and I was part of it. The first clip was about 8 minutes prior to the second, and followed on from the Hassan and Daph comments. She definitely threw Jack Septicai under the bus, and also crossed a few more names off the D who reached out bingo card. Besides that, the second clip was close to being what she should have just said altogether. Forget about saying who she thinks her real friends are, the most important part is that people reached out to see how she was faring. It's not a defense of the product or the way she handled the backlash, it's just the human element of making sure someone was okay. People make mistakes and I don't think people should be vilified for reaching out and seeing how that person is going, but it's always easier to point out how things could have been done in retrospect. Why are you just talking about your friends or so-called friends, it's like you're just calling them out so you don't have to get the hate? Oh no, I, I'm well aware of why people hate me and the confusion. I'm just, I'm just sharing my experience of all of this since I had the first meeting with Reflect. I mean, I'm not, I'm not mentioning, I'm not mentioning anyone specific that didn't reach out. I'm talking about the ones that did reach out that I'm thankful for. First of all, if there are people who genuinely hated her because of Reflect, then they've got a very shallow perspective to harbor such emotions. There are more pressing issues in the world than someone who released a product with faulty marketing, but she does also contradict herself in this, and giving her the benefit of the doubt, she probably forgot she named Jacksepticeye 10 minutes earlier. Again, these things can happen when you're under pressure, and I don't think she's maliciously naming people to take that pressure off herself. Her final thoughts were about the people who kept tabs on her and also defended her character publicly. Cause like, I, obviously I'm having like a, um, I was having like a mental, mental breakdown the past few days. And just having friends like validate the type of person that I know I am really helped. It's not surprising that this aspect of her stream was what created content for others, and sparked discourse within her community. At the same time, others were streaming, watching, and clipping, 
which led to the LSF subreddit filling up its boots. The circus continued when Rachel decided to stream again, this time reading those comments on LSF regarding the situation. This was until fellow streamer Miskiff intervened after watching her flail through the posts. Bro, should I like call her? I'm gonna call her, see what she answers. Ray. Hello. I'm What's reading it? every comment on Reddit. <laughs> Ray, don't. I'm not kidding you. You're going to go down a terrible rabbit hole with this, and you can't beat the internet. I Like, seriously, I think your best thing to do is to just not respond to any of that. Listen, I've been in your situation where I've gotten two, oh, three really? years ago. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> You've I, been in this situation? Okay, old Mizkif got leaked by Destiny, and Destiny's community went after me. I was in a similar situation. I, right, I was in a worse situation. I literally thought I was canceled. I thought my career was over. I'm like, that's it, I'm done. I had 3K viewers, and I'm like, this is the end of my career. I was going live to pretty much say I'm sorry to never stream again. You're in shock. There's a lot of pain going through you. You're not even saying the right things that you want to say because you're just so, like, just nerves and all these other things. In two days, no one's going to care. I think it's going to be at least a, a week. <laughs> even if. Like, this is this is a big even, deal. Even if it's a week, right, no one's going to care. And, and it's going to blow over. Hassan's going to say something stupid. They're going to be on his ass and you're going to be free. You going through Reddit right now, Ray, it's going to do nothing. It's They're just going to clip more shit. They're just going to comment on it. They're going to clip your YouTube channel. They're going to make more stuff about it. It's not worth it. You know? What do I do then? I, I think your best bet is to just straight up go offline. Miss Kiv's involvement ultimately shifted the direction of the situation and took it away from scrutinizing Rachel's products towards the interpersonal conflicts amongst creators. He was one of the only large streamers active during Rachel's initial stream, and so carried a lot of the Twitch viewers interested in the situation. He was clearly doing it for content reasons, and he doesn't deny that either. However, his intervention when she started reading Reddit, although appearing to be another attempt at fueling the drama, was actually quite decent. It depends on how you perceive his actions, but the advice he was giving Rachel was good. He was urging her to stop feeding into the drama and to spend some time offline. But he did make a joke out of it by urging people to shift the attention towards Hassan. Look, Hassan's just mad he wasn't watching your stream and I was. I get it, Hassan. The one day you took off to do your leftist politics and bullshit with H3H3, you're just pissed off that Ray went live and I got to watch it and I got all the fucking views. I get it. So I want you to say right now, Hassan, I really do think you're a piece of shit. Hassan, I really do think you're a piece of shit. <laughs> all right, we got the clip. We got the clip. Oh God! Listen, that's all Wait. you needed to say. Now, now the live stream. I won't read also... the red. Or the thread Don't on read Reddit. anything. You said it. Okay. It's all you the said it. Go to... It's all gonna go to Hassan now. You did the right thing, okay. Hassan. <laughs> go fuck yourself, dude. I like G Fuel. You're a horrible human being. Look the, what the I whole, said. It's... I told you. Look, Ray did the right thing by shitting on Hassan, and now Hassan's gonna get shit on, and everything's okay in the world. We're all fine. We're okay. Look, Charlie calls out Hassan for the G4. What about us? See? See? She did the right thing. We should just attack Hassan. It's so easy. Like, go fuck yourself. Yeah, yeah I whole, think Hassan's it's just a total so bitch, trademark. And I think we all can agree. I legitimately think Hassan is a horrible human being. Somehow, Miss saved the day. How the f? That, he didn't save shit. He fucking farmed drama. Okay? He literally oh, watched it, it, farm drama, then called Ray to continue farming drama and being like, yo, you should log off. And like, then became the savior, all while shitting on me. He literally farmed the entirety of LSF and motherfuckers are like, wow, Miskip, a real stand-up guy. Which, by the way, I respect that. Seven he's a demon, Pine, and I respect that. I think that that is out. like, he does it really well. He's the best in the fucking game and doing shit like that. But it's so funny how fucking delusional and childish some of you motherfuckers are when you're literally just like, oh my God, Miskiff was a good guy. Miskiff, you saved the fucking day, dude. Like, what, what do you mean? What do you think he's doing? He's doing content. He's a fucking content demon. And what did you say to me? Go ahead, tell him what you said. <laughs> I gotta go by. <laughs> you're such a pussy. You're such a pussy. She called me a clout goblin. She's such a pussy. She knows me so well. The next day, unsurprisingly, attention shifted onto Miss Kiff's actions the day before. I always see mutual benefits, right? Like, yeah, did I- No, but when you see somebody being wrong, do you actually defend them? Yeah. Yeah, not a lot of people have the balls to do that. Especially when there's something to lose. You could have lost. You had shit to lose. A lot of people don't have the balls to get involved when there's drama. And, and that's what I think it happened like to Valkyrie. She was really upset that her friends didn't come and defend her. But she needs to understand that a lot of people are afraid. People don't, don't want, it's, it's not worth it getting like destroyed by the internet. 
The same thing happened to me. Everybody stopped talking to me when I had drama. Comes Miskin. He took he took the heat, or what could have potentially been the heat. You got the balls, man. I feel like you're looking for some sort of um. You're looking for some sort of affirmation in regards to what you did last night is is that where we're going here preach i'm not i'm not here to be your validation button yeah. you, you sure listen <laughs> go ahead tear me down just do it just ruin me no i'm not gonna tear you down i think it's just like i've seen so much shit when it comes to the internet that i'm desensitized to a lot of it i agree with what you said that like if you weren't the one reacting to her stream like it would have been xqc or hassan or likely all three of you all at the same time fighting for oh we would have been fighting clip lsf real estate right we would have been fighting but for some reason they were I both out of town i think it's just like it, that's your guys's decision to make in regards to like your personal sentiments towards her like whether you care if that would hurt her feelings or not obviously i wouldn't do something like that because like out of respect for our friendship right so it's your decision to make i cannot call you like a bad person or a monster because i have had people do what you did to ray to me but be like a hundred times meaner mm. so like in my mind i see that parallel universe where you could have reacted in like a really really harsh rude way and at the very least i'm glad you didn't do that because i would never i, would have I knew i had a lot of viewers so i tried to make it into a giant joke because i knew that i could persuade the public because they're just sheep at this point a lot of discussion about valkyrie and reflect were geared towards the action and inaction of those around her it took about two days for the noise to simmer down and others gave their thoughts after a week of reflecting she has shown me to be naive and impulsive and too trusting, overly loyal to people and org that don't necessarily deserve her loyalty. But she is someone who just sees what's in front of her very often. And unfortunately, that means she's susceptible to being taken advantage of. Now, that being said, it is also her responsibility and her team's responsibility to make sure if she ever gets into ventures that it is the right, uh, the right choice. Three days later, Courage and Nadeshot discussed the situation on their podcast with guest Will Neff. Unlike many of the other creators, their thoughts on the situation reflected, I think, what a lot of people did at that point, too. I, I, I honestly think that the outrage is inflated, right? How many fucking beauty products have are, are anti-aging? Right? Oh, I know, dude. You can't, I, you yes, can't fucking retweet. stop aging. Why is it? Why is it, Why is no one fucking losing their mind about all the anti-aging, anti-wrinkle shit? When yeah. when Ray told me about this idea a year and a half ago, I, I mean, I don't know a goddamn thing about blue light, but I know what, what people have sold blue light glasses before. Maybe how blue light affects your eyes is different the way that it affects your skin. I mean, right. the beauty industry is a like a multi-billion billion billion dollar industry and it has been and always will be and i see this ms kid stream i see all these people still tweeting about it i couldn't believe how angry people were about a beauty product i cannot believe the 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 level of scrutiny that she received everyone was like oh my god ray made a mistake ray this giant streamer and i can take a i can basically take a swipe at this person get kudos for it and not worry about the the fucking pump back from it ray was basically just a target everybody had her in their crosshairs everybody in the gaming industry just looks every single week to find something that they're going to be mad about so that they can talk about it on social media when i looked at lsf and there were th like no less than 30 Ray posts. Everyone's take on Ray, 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 Ray. This is ghoulish. To air is human and to me, Ray is a person who has built her career on being a decent human being and a, and a good creator. Ray is someone who has always represented herself well, the gaming industry well. You know her behind the scenes, she couldn't hurt a fly. So for everybody in the world to just come out of the fucking you know darkness and be like well i'm a i'm a goddamn beauty expert now and this is a scam and blah 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 like these people that are taking such unbelievable hits that hits at her character when i know how much she did put into this behind the scenes um 
and what she's represented her whole career is like, holy shit, man. People are just terrible. They really, yeah. they really, really are. Some of Ray's friends on social media basically say, I don't know why everybody is so uh, upset about Reflex Skin. Now, I'm a woman. Would I buy this product after using it and unboxing it? Absolutely not. This product is not for me. But stop being mad at Ray. Why, why did you just add your two cents in here? You've made about 10 tweets now about Valkyrie saying everybody should stop bashing her. But then you gave this review where you're basically like, this product sucks. It's a sham. Don't buy it. I'm never using it again. Couldn't you just kept your fucking mouth shut? I couldn't believe some of these people that came out of the woodwork claiming to be Ray's friend, but over here tweeting about it gaslighting the product just so that they could get some interactions obviously you know if, if you don't agree with the science if you don't agree with what she's doing don't buy the product i, I just hate that it became like the, the the vogue thing to do to just like take shots at at a person who has been a pretty decent human being the entirety of her career that's my take Let's bring the attention back to the original issue. Over the two weeks that Rachel was under fire, Reflect was silent across all platforms. However, just 11 days after its announcement, the brand released a statement. Uh, ref Reflect is no longer. Um, we officially separated uh, without a lawsuit. <laughs> and... Um, they pulled their, all the products out of 400 stores. Um, yeah. So that that happened. Uh, it was a clean break. Took a long time, the lawyers and stuff, but we did it. I got really lucky that um, there were there wasn't a lawsuit. A lot of energy was directed at her since she was the face of the brand, and a lot of people would assume she was behind the controls of this train wreck. What needs to be emphasized is that she was the one approached with the offer to launch a cosmetics brand. The people behind the research, the funding, and the operations came to her to propose a business collaboration. Most of this discussion was lost in the more appealing drama that came from her reaction to the outrage, and it was to her detriment, despite what some would suggest. Her response to the situation and the decisions she made during the first week is where criticism is valid. An argument could be made that she should have done better knowing who she was working with and talked to others within the industry she was going to step into, but that's a lesson learned for next time. There is, however, criticism that was popular to dish out, but is also completely unreasonable. I feel like DMing or whatever could be like, like belittling it, because there's a problem with the, like the product and the fact checking. That's kind of like her job. But if you take if you sign contracts and you take on a job or responsibility, it literally is your responsibility, your job. Suggesting Rachel was culpable because she didn't do her own scientific research or fact check any of the claims made is not at all relevant. Neither are the claims she doubled down on a scam. A good analysis of this came from James Welsh, a YouTuber who covers the cosmetics world. A lot of people are saying she should have done her own research when this brand approached her. What the fuck did you want her to do? What did you want her to do? She is approached by a brand with a lab, with their own scientists, with their own chemists, who approach her with all this research. She could have given it a quick Google, but that's not how you do your own research. You can type anything into Google and find the answers that you want, whether they are true or not. Just Googling something quickly isn't isn't doing your research. That's not doing research. When you have, she is a streamer. She's not in the skincare world whatsoever. And this is down to confirmation bias, right? When you have a scientist, a chemist, all these people coming to you with studies that when you look at them, you don't really know what's going on, but hey, this looks legitimate. Like, where else are you gonna go? What else are you gonna do? You're gonna say to the scientists and the chemists, hold on a minute, I need to go off and do my own research into blue light and see what you think. I mean, sure, like this was two years ago, so I don't think there was as much information from experts online about blue light, but you know, what What I don't, like, what did you want her to do? What did you want her to do? I don't understand. Where else is she gonna go above a chemist and a scientist? However, she was naive to blindly walk into an industry without researching the key players and general background but at the same time, she had no reason to suspect foul play. Why would she bet her entire reputation on something that she knew would be misleading? 
That being said, had the launch gone ahead unhitched, she may have happily flaunted her products and reaped the rewards of a successful brand launch. It does appear that there wasn't any anticipation for such a strong negative response to the products that it caught everyone, particularly Rachel, off guard. Just three days before Reflect shuttered its doors, messages between Rachel and Ludwig leaked, which appeared to show her desire to leave the project. The messages read as emotional, much like her overall reaction to the situation, but her trust in those behind the scenes was evident as were the multi-million dollar investments by cosmetics distributors. This was a betrayal for her, and it was only her brand that was on the line, and she floundered through her thoughts trying to explain her side. She was a target, but only because she was vulnerable in that situation, and it continued for days on end. She did look back on the situation in posterity and explain the effect it had on her from a personal perspective. I missed a lot of things, I missed a lot of things, but... I was going through it. <laughs> I was going through it. Um, therapy told me that brain fog, <laughs> brain fog, is a very common, uh, a common thing for trauma and uh, stress. I just want to say that um, I'm well aware that I am not perfect. I have made a lot of mistakes, a lot of mistakes, I've made a lot of mistakes. I'm pretty sure I have actual brain issues from this whole situation. I think it'll get better in time. It really has only been two weeks, so I have to give myself some more time. Valkyrie this, Valkyrie that, the subject of scrutiny was the easiest target. The desire to believe in justice and holding others accountable did nothing but the opposite. In fact, the noise around Rachel led to others slipping away unnoticed. So where was this accountability that was so preached? Accountability is almost never found online. The reasons vary, sometimes a person is just too popular to face social accountability or maybe the legal systems are unable to intervene in a situation. But most of the time, it's because accountability is superficial in an online world. People do not have the attention span to seek out injustice and understand its root cause. It's easier to throw stones at an individual in the spotlight, rather than actually invest time into suggesting a change. It was more entertaining to joke about Reflect, shout at Valkyrie, and consume the drama that was manufactured by people wanting content. As much as she was involved, Rachel wasn't the only culpable figure with the launch of the Reflect brand. In fact, her involvement was ironically cosmetic. The people behind the scenes, the ones who pulled the strings and conducted the business and creation of Reflect, went almost unscathed. They are career professionals with decades of knowledge within their respective industries, and that put them in the position where they commanded an air of respect. So it's not unreasonable that Rachel put her trust in these people, which leads to the questions, who are they? And why are they trying to enter the gaming industry? Unfortunately, the answer won't lead us into some Shane Dawson-esque overhyped conspiracy thriller, but information readily available and names we've already heard. In fact, Joanna Cole's OBE is already well known to us because of a hilariously out-of-touch tweet she published under Rachel's voice note. Like, honestly, social media literacy. Please. But the other person involved was Claudia Poccia, who Joanna so helpfully named in that tweet. So how does a journalist, beauty industry veteran, and gamer manage to fit into the puzzle? Well, it all starts in the business. At the time of Reflex launch, a few new sites started to dig into the trademarks and companies involved in the creation of the brand. The two that came up were Blue Mistral and Ideavation Labs. Both companies hold the trademark for Reflect, but it was Ideavation that has a trademark for all of the products. This is where it gets interesting. Ideavation Labs was described as an incubator, which in layman's terms means it's a company with the sole purpose of creating brands and trying to make them successful, turn a profit, or even sell them on. A good example of an incubator is former brands. If you're into your beauty and wellness products, you may have heard of them, but I obviously didn't until I fell into this rabbit hole. What I did know is the names of the brands they incubate, and I think a lot of people will too. In their portfolio is no other than Morphe and Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics, two notable names when it comes to situations we've discussed on the BWC channel. So why does this matter? Well, the fact that Ideavation is regarded as an incubator indicates some sort of intent at building a brand. Another aspect of these incubators is innovation. And what's more innovative than creating a beauty product for gamers? 
It's a relatively untapped market and in one of the most saturated industries could have proven to be a very lucrative venture. However, those behind the scenes probably didn't account for how cynical Rachel's community would be, particularly gamers who have been shorthanded by big companies for years now. What supports this theory is the fact that Ideation Labs was incorporated on New Year's Eve in 2020, the same day that Blue Mistral applied for the Reflect trademark, with all three trademarks covering what Reflect intended to be. But what is Blue Mistral? Could the blue be a reference to a long-term scheme regarding blue light? No, shut up. After some light digging, it turns out Blue Mistral is a holding company for another beauty brand named Fakai. It was founded when the original owner of Fakai, Frederick Fakai, reacquired his namesake brand with the help of another company named Cornell Capital back in 2018. This is where our two professionals come together. Joanna is a senior advisor to Cornell Capital, however, she's also on the board of Blue Mistral. Claudia, as it turns out, is the CEO of Fekai. So now we have a brand that's seemingly reputable in the mix, and is more than likely where Reflect's so-called studies came from. It's also worth noting that Fekai products are sold in retail at Ulta. Now, Joanna Coles is a digital media expert with decades of experience in media publishing. Claudia Poccia has roots in the beauty and wellness industry. So when they come knocking, it's not like you can really fault Rachel all too much. It does seem like she was targeted because of her status, so it would be interesting to find out if any other prominent gaming figures were approached too. But maybe, just like Rachel, Joanna and Claudia should have researched the new market too. In Joanna's statement to the Washington Post, she said, On Reflect's homepage, we include references to academic studies citing the impact of blue light on the skin. Anyone with a computer should read these. It's hard enough for young women to start a business in a male-dominated economy. I am confident that if a male gamer had come up with Reflect, he would have been roundly applauded. She touches on the fact that they eventually included academic studies on blue light, but also references the issues within the games industry regarding the treatment of women. I don't doubt that for some people, the main point of anger was because of misogyny, but using that as a PR deflection towards criticism for the marketing of the product takes a lot of guts and also diminishes Rachel's status in gaming. She's already built a successful business in the gaming industry. She can ship a quoted 50,000 units of merch in one release. The problem wasn't with her. It's intriguing how two people with decades of experience in the professional world could horribly misjudge and mishandle what could have been the biggest cosmetic brand in gaming. The lines of communication were weak and there was ultimately no transparency. What were the intentions? Why did they let this fail? And where are they going next? These are the questions that should have been asked, but weren't, and we'll probably never know unless they decide to respond. The anger towards Rachel was understandable. The product was designed to capitalize on a manufactured fear, but the outrage was misdirected. There wasn't a real push for people like Joanna or Claudia to offer an explanation for what happened. Rachel just took the full brunt of the backlash and it hurt her. Reflect was just a throwaway for them, an investment that didn't pay off, and they'll just look to think of more ways to develop brands. Rachel not only has nothing to show for those two years, but also suffered public embarrassment, abuse, and probably has fractured relationships with a few people as a result. So at the end of the day, there was no accountability achieved, and all that really came from this situation was two weeks of avoidable drama. When you look at the greater picture, Rachel found herself caught in something much, much bigger than her. She became the face of a product designed to remedy a moral panic that most evidence suggests is just a manufactured fear. We will probably never know if the purported blue light defense of Reflect's proprietary formula is valid unless it returns in another form. However, at its surface, it was designed for a real problem, but like a lot of the cosmetics industry, its marketing was based on theory rather than fact. You don't have to understand too much about the cosmetics and wellness industries to know a lot of products say they do things that are most likely exaggerated. And that's just how the marketing works. As mentioned on the Courage and Nature podcast, anti-aging products can't actually stop aging. 
They can make your skin look and feel better, and they may even slow down signs of aging, but it's not truly a way of halting the aging process. It's cosmetic, it helps make you look and feel better, but it doesn't exactly improve your health. And that's why the cosmetics industry gets away with being so creative with its marketing. Now this is a topic in itself, so we won't go too deep into it. But the way the cosmetics industry is regulated allows for these things to happen. Looking at a US context, the FDA doesn't need to approve a cosmetics product before it goes to market. However, it does regulate the products under the Food, Drug and Cosmetic Act, and the Fair Packaging and Labeling Act. What does this mean? Well, to be short, don't try to sell poison or mislabel and package your product. Clearly not what we are looking at with regards to Reflect, so let's look at the FTC. Now, the Federal Trade Commission is what supposedly protect consumers from the pesky liars of the corporate world. According to the FTC Act, advertising must be truthful and non-deceptive. Advertisers must have proof to back up their claims, and advertisements cannot be unfair. So this means companies have to conduct performance studies to back up the claims they are making. These are known as claim substantiation studies. An article analyzing various ingredients that purport to offer blue light protection says, it is essential that cosmetic ingredient suppliers selling ingredients and product manufacturers manufacturers incorporating ingredients into their products conduct performance studies. There is currently not a formal standardized way to test blue light claims. However, a variety of methods have been developed. As more research results are published on the effects of blue light on the skin, blue light protection ingredient launches have been increasing in the last few years. Today, a variety of ingredients are available from a variety of sources. Even though there is not a formal standardized method for testing the efficacy of blue light filters, there are many claim substantiation methods used in the personal care industry currently. These prove the efficacy of products and the usefulness of low exposure. It's probable then that the studies conducted over the six months could have just been to develop a formula that claims to protect against blue light. Reflect may even be viable as a blue light shield. We won't know unless the BLPF formula is revealed. If the product does as advertised, then there's no real lie in what it purports to do. And it's not the first product to do so. From a business point of view, it was entirely okay to go ahead with the brand but they didn't plan for the wild card. There's always the undetermined factor of self-regulation, which is sometimes more powerful than institutional regulators. Reflect is a great example of the self-regulatory nature of online communities. When it bands together, it can stop something it doesn't like or approve of. The reaction was loud and intense, and surely their message would scare anyone else away from venturing down the same road. As we saw at the early dawn of this year, it didn't. It's clear the message wasn't heard, and the sanctimonious infighting shifted the attention away from the real issues present in this saga. There was more noise about who's friends with who than about what was going on behind the scenes to produce such a questionable product. Rachel herself should be the least surprised to find that others were lured into the grasp of a prospective dream launch. Shifting from the gaming scene to the lifestyle, TikTok, and Instagram influencer world, expectations for quality are high, but scrutiny of the benefits of the product or not. This is a place where multivitamins are rampant, online wellness and cosmetic products are plenty. So when Addison Rae announced her own line of blue light protection, the gaming world stood shocked as she faced the shallow cries from a market she isn't even a part of. Meet Screen Break, Item Beauty's blue light and anti-pollution face mist. I'm on my phone and my laptop a lot and if you don't know, the blue light that comes from devices can actually cause skin fatigue. So this is clinically proven to help protect your skin from those artificial blue lights. The second ray to take on the apparent threat from our much-loved devices has a much different background to our streamer and gaming powerhouse. Addison is an influencer. Her entire career is about doing things with other influential people and using platforms like TikTok and Instagram to show her life to the world. She's from another crowd, and although they may share the same space, their communities have different standards regarding what they consume. The critics would obviously decry such a product, but the people who will consume it don't care. As long as it's not broken or dangerous, they will buy regardless. The shock from those within gaming is understandable, but the assumption that their own experience would be heard by those from outside is ultimately naive. The gaming industry was the target for Reflect. It was arguably the biggest attempt to try and establish a beauty brand within a market where very little exists. It was a failure on all fronts, not just for the establishment of the brand, but the way the community reacted. It's only a matter of time before someone tries again, and the culprits of the last attempt faced little consequence. 
Holding influential people accountable for their actions is important, and in situations where there is genuine criticism, it shouldn't be shrugged off. The reaction to Rachel and her attempt at entering the cosmetics market was overtly extreme from within her own community, but beyond it seemed like people hardly cared. The shift of focus from a product accused of trying to mislead fans quickly turned to a group of streamers trying to make some headlines from the situation, and in the end, the real issue went untouched. It's a reflection of where we are at the moment. Short-lived digestible drama is more interesting than deeper issues, and cancelling the immediate problem is much easier than rooting out and eliminating the core issue. The Valkyrie brand went relatively unharmed as a result of this situation. Reflect is a slight tarnish of what is a very strong and respected name in the gaming and streaming worlds. The effect it had on Rachel personally is for her to say, but from what she has said, it hurt. However, this experience could only strengthen her, and now she knows what to look out for when stepping outside her realm of knowledge. Slinking back into the shadows, the masterminds behind the business deal with one of the largest women in gaming have returned to the status quo. They did not face the questions Rachel did and seemingly avoided any and all criticism for their part in the project, but at the same time, few did little to question them. As we saw, the gaming world was surprised when another product surfaced with an almost identical purpose. The waves of criticism Rachel faced were ultimately redundant, and the problems plaguing the consumer's cosmetics industry still persist. But what can be guaranteed is that no one in gaming is going to venture far beyond their comfort zone anytime soon. Thank you to the BWC patrons Marissa Lynn and Icewing. You can join them in supporting future BWC videos by heading to patreon.com forward slash BWCYT. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Um.